Hi guys, welcome to Getmatic. In the previous lecture, we have solved all the previous year gate problem related to PWO inverter that has been asked from 1991 to 2017. Now in this lecture, we will start the ESE question. We will discuss the ESE question that has been asked from PWO inverter till now. Okay, so let's get started. See the first problem, PWM switching is preferred in voltage source inverter for the purpose of controlling output voltage, this is correct. Output harmonics, this is also correct. Reducing filter size, this is also correct. Option DC, controlling output voltage, output harmonics and reducing filter size. So finally, we have to tick on option D and the concept I already explained you when I taught you the PWM inverter, okay. See the next question. For the elimination of fifth harmonic from the output of the inverter, what will the position of pulse in the PWM inverter? Means they are asking the pulse width that is equal to 2D. And this is asked in gate exam also. If you have gone through my previous lecture, then this has been asked in gate exam also. And the op correct option was, I know that is pulse width of 72 degree. See, I need to remove the fifth harmonic means I need to put the sign 5D is equal to 0. D will come out to be pi by 5 that is nothing but 36 degree. So pulse width is, is required that is equal to 2D that is equal to 72 degree. So watch my previous lecture you will understand this is the single PWM technique and write down the Fourier series of uh, single PWM technique and put sin 5D is equal to 0 you will get the pulse width that is equal to 72 degree okay. So option A is correct. See the next problem. In single pulse modulation of PWM inverter the pulse width of 120 degrees given. For an input voltage of 220 volt DC, what is the RMS value of fundamental component of the current? So this is also again asked in gate exam also, only the parameter is different. So pulse width is given that is equal to 120 degree and I know this is the single PWM technique. So I need to find the B1 RMS, I know B1 RMS is equal to 2 root 2 into VDC upon pi into sin D. Okay, from where it is coming, this is V0 of T is equal to summation of N is equal to 135. In single PWM technique, it is equal to 4 VDC upon n pi into sin n d into sin n omega naught t. So from here, B1 will be equal to 4 VDC upon pi into sin d and B1 RMS will be equal to 2 root 2 VDC upon pi into sin d. Fine. So d will come out to be 60 degree. So put the value of each and every parameter 2 root 2 multiplied by VDC is given 220 upon pi into sin 60. So it will be equal to 171.5 volt. So whatever the concept I gave you in all the PWM lecture, that is more than enough to solve each and every problem related to gate as well as ESC. This has been asked in ESC 2009 for one marks. Okay, see the next problem. In a PWM inverter, F0 and F are the frequency in hertz of for the carrier signal and reference signal, then the number of pulse per half cycle. This I explain you in lecture number, I think 40 go through the lecture number 40 there I derived the number of pulse per half cycle that is equal to FC upon 2 FR where FR is the reference frequency and FC is the carrier frequency. So here I can write F upon 2 F naught. So option B is correct. Go through the lecture number 14 you will understand. See the fifth problem multiple pulse width modulation is used to reduce the harmonic content in inverter this is correct. The higher order harmonics can be e easily filtered using passive filter. This is also correct. So both are correct, but both are not giving the correct explanation of each other. Okay, so option B is correct. See the sixth one. A PWM switching scheme is used in three phase inverter. Okay, PWM switching scheme are using in whether it is three phase or single phase. The, the concept will remain same. So option C, the option A, reduce the total harmonic distortion with modest filtering. Fine, it is correct. B. Minimize the load on the DC side. Don't know about this. C. Increase the life of the battery. C. The option D. That is reduce lower order harmonics and increase higher order harmonics. This has been asked in gate exam also. So option D is correct. See the next problem. In a single phase full bridge inverter, what is the advantage of unipolar switching over bipolar switching? This is really important guys and I explain you the advantage of using unipolar and bipolar okay so if you will compare the unipolar with bipolar i told you that bipolar having voltage more fluctuation there is more fluctuation in voltage however if i will talk about the unipolar then there is less fluctuation in voltage so if there will be less fluctuation in voltage 
then definitely the losses will be less okay and if there are losses will be less then we can go for the high switching frequency means we can increase the switching frequency up to 400 times 300 times but in bipolar we, we have to compromise with the switching frequency because of more losses in uh, in the switch because of more fluctuation so overall i explained you that uh, switching frequency of bipolar is less than the unipolar means definitely the switching frequency of unipolar will be much much higher than the bipolar now see the option it is asking the advantage of unipolar switching over the bipolar increase of the fundamental component by a factor of 100 uh, 115 for the same dc input voltage i don't think this is the correct explanation because if you do the fourier series of pole to pole voltage then the fourier series expression of pole to pole voltage will remain as it is b elimination of fifth and seventh harmonic in both the process whether it is bipolar or unipolar we can remove the fifth harmonic as well as seven harmonic so this is not the advantage c apparent doubling of the switching frequency this can be possible why because of less losses in the switch we can go for the higher switching or highest switching frequency if i will compare with the bipolar so switching frequency of unipolar is much much higher than a bipolar so definitely here i will use the mosfet that will give me high switching frequency and here i will use the igbt fine so option c is uh, satisfying this the, the advantage of unipolar switching over the bipolar switching got it and the concept i already explained you in lecture number 43 go through the bipolar pwm technique you will understand what i am trying to say see the eighth problem this i haven't explained you the concept so i will explain explain you now in the sinusoidal pw modulation scheme if the zero of the triangular wave coincide with the zero of reference sinusoidal then the number of pulse per half cycle will be what see i am taking both the cases first case is peak value of carrier coincide with zero of reference see here peak is coincide with zero of reference then in that case what is going to happen so i told you that in pwm scheme what i do i do the coding in comparator that if vr of t is greater than vc of t then trigger the pulse give the output voltage so see here at this point vr of t is greater than the carrier uh, voltage so output voltage output pulse i am getting again see here here also vr of t is greater than the carrier voltage means output voltage i am getting again see here vr of t is greater than the carrier voltage so output voltage i am getting now see what is the time period of this uh, this carrier wave from 0 to pi if i will see from 0 to pi then i can easily say three times of time period of carrier wave is equal to the tr by 2 half of time period of reference wave i can write like this so from here i can say 3 is equal to tr upon 2tc and 3 is nothing but number of pulse i am getting at the output so n is equal to tr can be replaced by 1 upon fr and tc can be replaced by 1 upon fc so it will be equal to fc upon 2 fr so number of pulse will be equal to fc upon 2 fr if peak value of triangular wave is coincide with the zero but here see what is saying if the zero of triangular wave coincide with the zero of reference sinusoidal then the number of pulse per half cycle will be what so this will be not be the answer of this question because i derived the case one that is if peak value of carrier wave coincide with the zero then the number of pulse will be equal to fc upon 2 fr now see the second case that will explain you the answer of this question in second case what i am doing i am coinciding with the peak value of carrier wave and the reference wave both are coinciding fine so see here here i am getting four pulse of carrier wave per half cycle from 0 to pi if i will see then what is there it is like four times of time period of carrier wave is equal to half of time period of reference wave this equation is satisfied see here four uh, four triangular wave is there but see here number of pulse i am getting that is only three so i can write something like this three plus one is equal to tr upon 2tc that can be written as fc upon 2fr and three is nothing but number of pulse so number of pulse will be equal to fc upon 2fr minus one so this is the answer of this question if the zero of triangular wave coincide with the zero of reference sinusoidal then the number of pulse per half cycle will be equal to fc upon 2fr minus 1 so fc upon 2fr minus 1 only one equation that is option d is correct so this is important you can take it the concept i have not explained you because in sinusoidal pwm technique i just go through the high switching frequency but see here this is the low switching frequency module 
that's why i have i have not explained you but the concept will remain same okay now see the last question that is the ninth question and this had been asked in esc 2016 what is saying in sinusoidal p pulse with modulation width of each pulse is varied in proportion to the amplitude of sine wave evaluated at the center of same pulse that is correct see here in sinusoidal pwm modulation the width of each pulse is varied according to the peak of sine voltage see here it is the sine wave is giving peak here okay so pulse width is more here the at the center the pulse width will be more and at the corner the pulse width will be less since here i am talking about the low switching frequency if i will go with the high switching frequency then the at the corner the pulse width will be somehow like this and it will increase according to the magnitude of the peak value of sine wave so at the at the 90 degree it will be maximum so a statement a statement one is satisfying that is correct now see the statement two the rms value of output voltage can be varied by varying the modulation index that is also correct i told you that modulation index is nothing but vc upon vr so take this triangular wave something like this i am just doing the rough and this is my sinusoidal wave let us take for half cycle only this is at pi now what is the modulation index modulation index is vc upon vr so if peak value of sine wave will decrease then definitely the modulation index will increase or if the peak value of sine wave will increase then definitely the modulation will uh, index will decrease so see let us take this as 90 degree so at 90 degree the pulse width is something like this now if i will decrease the vr so if i will decrease the vr and keeping the vc constant then definitely the modulation index will increase and if modulation index will increase then see the pulse width at 90 degree pulse width will also increase got it so i can say that pulse width of um, output voltage is depending upon the modulation index and it can be varied by varying the modulation index so this statement is also true and see whether this statement is correct explanation of a statement one or not see in sinusoidal pulse with modulation width of each pulse is varied proportional to the amplitude of sine wave this is this is correct and the reason being is it depends upon the modulation index only width of the pulse is depending upon the modulation index so i can relate the statement two with a statement one so option a is correct got it so this much amount of questions is being asked in esc till now and whatever i taught you that is more than enough to crack prelims esc prelims okay so trust on the power electronics lecture and try to make the short notes as well as the notes uh, of power electronics whatever i taught you that is more than enough for cracking gate as well as esc so in this way we have completed the very bulky module that is the single phase voltage source inverter having fixed voltage fi variable frequency as well as variable voltage variable frequency that is the pwm technique now in the from the next lecture i will start the three phase inverter and in this i will start the 180 degree conduction mode so whatever i taught you till now if you understood those concept then three phase inverter is nothing for you it is very easy uh, along with the fourier series expression also most of the guys are having a problem in fourier series expression in three phase inverter but don't worry once you have gone through these all things that is the pwm inverter that is the toughest part in inverter modules once you have gone through the pwm inverter then i don't think you will have a problem in three phase inverter so from next lecture we will start the three phase inverter and in which we will see the 180 degree conduction mode okay so if you guys understood the concept then please like this video and if you are having any doubt then you can ask in the comment below or join our facebook group for doubt solving